Jim Paulson is the chief investment strategist at Luthold Group, and he joins us now to discuss. So, Jim, let's start with your view. Uh, the U.S. economy is kind of entering this fifth economic revival since the crisis. I think we've all um, kind of seen there's been a series of mini cycles, really, since uh, we came out of the bottom of 2009. What are you seeing as we head uh, into 2020? Well, you know, the way I'm kind of looking at it, Miles, is Last year, we had almost a 20% decline in the uh, uh, S&P 500 index, just shy of that, which is the traditional definition of a bear market. And what I've felt like, we're not in the first year of a bull, but it sure did feel like it last year, um, in the sense that you know, once you get a bear market, um, you, you end up getting a lot of fear as people ex think a recession's coming, um, the fundamentals start to deteriorate, earnings uh, kind of fade, fade, come off. You get um, a lot of fear of end of cycle. Uh, you get a lot of doubt any, anything is going to improve. Um, and yet the stock market starts to take off, which it did uh, shortly after the collapse in late 2018. And when it first goes up, no one really believes, it believes it's going to continue. Um, it's driven really by uh, uh, a, a wall of fear. It's driven by uh, a revaluation of this market, which took place in eight, 2018, by lower bond yields, which we got last year, and then by full-on policy support from policy officials who also are scared that a recession was coming. I look back to 1950, and of all first-year bull markets, um, last year's performance from December 24th of 2018 to December 24th of last year, the first year of this new cycle, uh, was right on par with the uh, average first year bull market run. Um, and, and I really think when I look ahead to 2020 now, I think I kind of look at it as the second year of a fresh bull market run. And in the second year, the drivers change. People start to pick up that the recovery might, might indeed be coming. Uh, they start to get a little more optimistic. Fundamentals start to re improve. Economic reports pick up. Earnings estimates eventually start to go up. Uh, and I think we're starting to see a lot of that. If this, if this thing continues to mirror uh, the historical bull market in the second year, the S&P 500 could reach as high as 35 to 3,600 this year. And I guess that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a market this year driven more by earnings kind of coming back, by optimism sort of returning, even if interest rates go up and even if policy officials start to mm -hmm. tighten again before the year is out. Well, and then, Jim, I guess on that backdrop, um, we kind of have been, gotten used to people saying, oh, well, we're late cycle, right? We're 10 years into a bull market. But you know, you're talking about this idea of, of, you know, cycles plateauing and then restarting again. And there's a, a lot of people saying 2013, right, was really the beginning of the secular bull market yeah. and that, you know, 09 to 13 was just a, a recovery. So on that backdrop, are we actually late cycle or did we learn something last year about this economic cycle that we're just going to have to throw out the old, you know, seven year average economic recovery run, and we're going to have to look at this market with new eyes. I think so. It's a little unnerving, uh, Miles. I've been in the business, this is my 37th year, and I don't remember a time when it's, uh, everything has kind of been as weird as it's been really in the last decade. Uh, we've had a cycle with very slow growth. Uh, it took forever to return to full employment. We are now officially in the longest economic expansion in U.S. history ever. We're in the longest bull market ever in U.S. history. So we're truly in uncharted waters. We're, we're using things we've just never used before, policies never heard of. You know, we had TARP, we had cash for clunkers, now we got quantitative easing adopted everywhere. We're talking about modern uh, monetary theory. Um, we, we've got a trillion dollar federal deficit, even though we got a fully employed economy at the current moment. You know, we have negative bond yields around the world. Um, just all kinds of weird things. I'm not sure what guidepost, but I'll tell you this. I think that this is the calendar oldest recovery ever, but it is in many ways character young. Uh, we still got a, uh, a really solid and healthy consumer balance sheet, one of the healthiest it's, it's been, even with posit a decade worth of positive savings rates, a big gain in consumer uh, net worths, a very low debt to equity ratio, very liquid balance sheets. Um, that shouldn't be the case in the 11th year of an economic expansion. We've, we've got a productivity starting to pick up. We've got a labor force participation rate that's been falling for throughout the recovery that's now starting to pick up. 
We've got a household formation surge going on as millennials are finally starting to marry and form households. Uh, we, we've just recessed the manufacturing sector across the globe and we now can bring that back out of recession again. So there's a lot of characters that make this recovery and its bull market perhaps younger than it looks hmm. just by calendar standards. I don't know if that means it's gonna continue a long time, <laughs> but I'm giving, it, I'm giving it a little more r so, room to run than I normally would at this point. As you run <laughs> through all of those points though, it reminds me that we have uh, inflation that is missing, right? We have a basically, you, you went through a bunch of employment statistics and we have a Phillips curve that's broken. Uh, the biggest risk this year, you have a question mark after it, it, but you put it here as a subtitle, biggest risk this year is inflation. What do you think happens to inflation in 2020? And what does that mean investors should be putting their money in? Uh, Jen, I, I think every, every recovery in post-war history, going all the way back to 1950, has, has ended with some problem of overheat before it ended. That is, problem where inflation and costs started to rise, where rates had to be increased, where policy officials had to tighten. I think this one's gonna end the same way. And, and, and actually, 2018, it got this close to ending in that traditional way. Inflation had gone up, yields were rising, the Fed was tightening, and we almost ended it. But instead, we paused it. And I think ultimately, we're still at full employment. The unemployment rate's at three and a half percent. If we do reaccelerate growth a little bit in the world, I think we're gonna aggravate resource pressures and start to put upward pressure again on inflation. I don't see runaway inflation, but with every policy in the world firing full off, with the stated goal of the United States Federal Reserve now to increase inflation, uh, I think they're gonna succeed and ultimately, if inflation does come back and rates have to go up, that probably will end this cycle. But I'm not convinced that's this year. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a few years from now. And in the meantime, I would start to look to areas that haven't participated as broadly in this bull. And the biggest area to me is away from the United States. We've been the epicenter of this stock market bull. I would look at international stock markets, particularly emerging stocks. I would look at small cap stocks. I would look at more of the cyclical as opposed to uh, the stable steady eddy or low vol investments. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would own a diversified basket still, but I would tilt more in those directions. All right, Jim Paulson, Chief Investment Strategist at the Luthol Group. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.